Hi, this is Yuji Igarashi from Fujifilm. It has been only about 50 days since the previous X Summit, so a very short interval. Today, I am at Fujifilm Clay Studio in Tokyo. It's essentially the heart of product design, where all Fujifilm products are being designed. Of course, including the digital cameras. We will be presenting our X Summit from here today. As a matter of fact, it's already the third X Summit in 2022. It's because we have prepared many products to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the X Mount. At the X Summit back in May, we introduced the XH2S and stacked CMOS sensor, followed by the XH2 and the 40 megapixel sensor in September. These two products are recognized as versatile high-performance cameras for both photography and video production, rightly so as double flagship models. Video is an integral part of visual arts in today's world, which should never be forgotten. Features such as 4K 120p of the X-H2S and 8K 30p of the X-H2 represent are cutting-edge technologies in the field of video production. Having said that, Fujifilm will never forget photography, which means we will never forget its photographic cameras. As a leading photography company, to design a camera advocating the photography-first philosophy is a must. This is our commitment to all photography fans. It is the item that concludes the 10th anniversary of the X-Mount. Fujifilm X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 Fujifilm X-T5 this is the last piece for the 10th anniversary of X Month XT5. The first model of the XT series, the XT1, was released in 2014 to celebrate Fujifilm's 18th anniversary. The X-T1 was the first product in the interchangeable lens cameras that I, Watanabe, planned. And since then, I have been in charge of all the models of X-T series. My latest work will be the X-T5, which is the fifth generation of X-T series. It may sound a bit cheeky, but the XT series is like violin. What I mean is that it has been perfect since its emergence and hasn't changed its form for a long time. I am not saying that my idea was excellent. I want to say that the concept of the XT series matched with the nature of photography and that was a universal quality. Let's look at the three dial design located on the top. Combined with the aperture ring on the lens, 
The four dial control system is more than just a feature of the X series. It is the basic foundation of photography. Please take a look. ISO sensitivity, shutter speed, exposure compensation, aperture, and all exposure settings can be monitored at a glance. Even when the camera is turned off. This not only ensures accurate control, but also allows the photographer to concentrate more on framing since they can check the exposure setting before looking through the viewfinder. There is then the viewfinder LCD panel positioned on the optical axis. The overlap of the center line of the lens, camera, and photographer is fundamental when photography is your first priority. Yes, the X-T5 will have a three-way tilt LCD screen. The X-T4 had a variable LCD with both photography and video production in mind. But now we have the X-H2 in the fifth generation X-Series lineup. For the X-T5, we decided to strengthen its characteristic as a photographic camera once again. However, sticking with tradition is not what the X-T3 offers. Continuously brushing up the nature and universality of photography is the concept behind the X-T3. I interpret June's concept of the X-T series as most classic and most modern. Does that sound like a contradiction to you? By focusing on the thrill of manual operation and improved operability. We are striving for the ultimate classic that is the heart of photographic equipment. At the same time, the design was sharpened and evolved to be more modern. Classic and modern are concepts that coexist and enhance each other. From XT1 to XT5, I have consistently worked in product design. And I believe it has been a history of pursuing a balance between these two concepts. Of course, that is no different with XT5. For example, look at this grip section. Starting with the grip design of the moderately size XT1, we have been working to improve the grip for four generations, and the XT5 is another evolutionary improvement. More specifically, we added three new approaches while keeping the same convexity as the grip of the X-T4. First is to shift the shutter button and front command dial forward. Second is to reduce the amount of convexity of the shutter button and reduce the gap between the shutter button and the top cover. And third is to configure the grip shape with the simplest possible surface. The result is the better hold on the entire right hand, especially the middle finger, while the index finger can read smoothly to the shutter button. I hope you will feel this evolution with your own right hand. In addition, the entire camera design has been refined to be simpler, more modern, and easier to use by harmonizing the shape of the finder section and the surface around the mount and simplifying the bottom of the camera. Since the shape of the dial and the convexity of the buttons directly affect operability, even the lock button on the dial have been thoroughly reviewed down to the smallest detail. Furthermore, it is not only the shape but also the finishing touches. In XT5, 
we also aimed to evolve the black color. The direction of evolution is more black and finer and elegant texture. To achieve these goals, we applied a new technique to reduce the particle size and increased the blackness through innovations in pigmentation. A black camera body is defined by its tight and fearless appearance, and we are able to achieve a black color that matches the body that has evolved into a simple and solid design. I am sure this camera will fuel your desire to shoot. We have talked a lot about this camera. And this camera retains a character that is immediately recognizable as a XT series, even when viewed from a few meters away. But when you hold it in your hand, you can clearly see the numerous evolutions. The XT has undergone a series of such inheritances and evolutions. For the fifth generation XT5, its design has been further refined. This is the XT5. Hello, so uh, here is the uh, XT5, which is a beautiful camera, uh, as the predecessors were. And the design of the camera is, I feel like a evolution. Uh, there's a, a philosophy behind the design that has, uh, has kept true to the original XT range but has evolved over the time. Uh, I've had every single one of those cameras, X-T1, X-T2, X-T3, X-T4, and now the X-T5. And it feels like it's a camera that is natural for me to hold. It feels comfortable in the hand. I like the fact that we have gone back to the original tilt style of the screen and having all of the tactile buttons and everything else really close to my hand as a uh, very fast shooting photographer, that helps me greatly. I can very easily change shutter speed, aperture, and the ISO, of course. And from a design point of view, it really keeps everything uh, very sensible, keeps everything very tight, keeps everything very close, and just allows me to get on with my job very easily. And from when using the X-H2S, that's primarily something that I will be using for filming, but now we have the photography first philosophy for the X-T5 again, and, and it's a remarkable camera for stills photography, for somebody like me that shoots documentary photography, documentary weddings, family photography, photojournalism. It's very rapid and it's very clearly designed for us to be able to take pictures very quickly. I need to be able to switch between manual focus mode and uh, continuous focus mode. So it's really lovely that we still have that switch on the X-T5. I will often be shooting with my camera to the viewfinder, but often also I will use the tilt screen and raise it above my head so I can be shooting down at people, uh, especially at weddings when it's very busy, so I need to be able to shoot into the crowd. Um, the viewfinder is great, the EVF is great, and the LCD, of course, works for all kinds of opportunities. It's just a very, very well-rounded, very well-designed uh, camera that's going to make you feel like a photographer when you're holding it in your hands. The design has been consistent from the X-T1, two, three, and now to the X-T5. So that's why I think um, this um, design really speaks to photography purists, uh, people who lo love the analog style. It's got this golden triangle of photography um, that can be seen even if the camera is not turned on. When you're holding the camera, you already know what the exposure compensation is, um, the shutter speed, the ISO and also the aperture. So it's almost like you can get ready to shoot as you are turning the on-off button. So in a way, right, um, the way the dials are positioned, it becomes sort of like an extension of my mind. So if you say that photography um, is a language, then um, the camera really is a pen um, that is helping me to speak this language that sort of trans translates what is in my mind um, using my fingers and the dials. So this golden triangle um, is remnants of the old film cameras that I started shooting with. It reminds me of the reason why 
I love photography, why I marvel at photography being the exposure of light. Because when I'm turning um, the buttons, I can actually feel um, you know, the light changing um, as the aperture is changing. And I can feel the magic of photography uh, within these dials. So when I am holding on to NXT um, series camera, I really feel like I'm home. I feel like this is why I started um, photography in the first place. I've been lucky enough to experience the whole history of the XT series. I've seen the first mock-up when it was presented to us nine years ago, I think, um, and now all the way up to the XT5. And what I really like is that his, it has stayed true to its origins, which is the classical dial setup. And to me, that is still the best interface for photography. I have everything under my fingertips from shutter speed, ISO, aperture, exposure compensation. And to me, that feels so natural to use. And also, I feel like it makes me more creative um, as a photographer to have all these settings like available directly i can the difference between this kind of style and a, a normal camera is that i can feel what i'm doing and i don't have to look or know what i'm doing i just can feel what i'm doing so i know what one click means so without taking the camera away from my eye i can completely adjust my settings to any situation another factor we worked on the body design was downsizing Large, easy-to-see viewfinder and LCD, powerful IBIS, large capacity battery and so on. Enhancing performance and versatility tends to result in increased body size. The evolution of cameras has always been inseparable from handling upsizing. We thought it was important to come up with a size to fit in your hand, especially since it's a camera which can be operated intuitively through the traditional dials. Have a look over here. This is a frontal view of the X-T5. Compared to the X-T4, you can see that it has become one size smaller. It was reduced by 5 mm in width and by 2 mm in height. The dimensions are almost the same as the X-T1. We squeezed in the highest specifications possible into a body size of the first generation XT, which was lightweight and mobile. The weight was reduced by 50 grams compared to the XT4. It weighs less than two thirds of a typical full size mirrorless camera. We managed to keep all the important features during downsizing process. The performance of X-T5 has evolved from X-T4 massively while accomplishing a revolutionary downsizing. So the size and weight of the camera are integral to how well I perform overall on the trip um, because this means um, that you would have to lock the camera um, onto overhead airplane compartments, um, go on the buses and trains. So you need to be able to travel well and you need to feel like you are in control and not overwhelmed by the equipment um, that you are taking along with you. So you need to feel like you are in control of two camera bodies and three lenses, for example, when you go on a long assignment. Size and weight really matters. I mean, like it's something that we don't really talk about so regularly. Um, that the largest camera is not always the best. In fact, the smaller, the better. So I've shot um, 400 weddings before in the past, and eight of these years I was using the DSLR until the last two years when I switched um, to the XT series. And that meant that my photography gear um, dropped from 1.7 kilograms on each shoulder um, to around 900 grams um, on the mirrorless system on the XT mirrorless system with the lens and body included. The most important thing about the size to me is on the other side of the camera. Because if you have a camera that's too big, it's going to impress people too much and it becomes a barrier between me and my subject. 
And also I feel it's very important that the camera is not so big that I can hide behind it. There's always part of my face showing to my subject, which helps me to connect to the people in front of the camera. So that's why I always enjoy using the smaller cameras when I'm working with people who are not used to being photographed. This camera is always refined over X-T1, X-T2, X-T3, X-T4, X-T5 and it fits every time, it fits just a little bit better. It's weird that it can still be better with each generation, uh, but this one feels even better than the previous one. So, and that has been going on since X-T1. Let us introduce you to some of the major devices. In September, we introduced the X-H2 with a fifth generation Xtron CMOS 5 HR. And we have also adapted it in the X-T5. As we all know, the Xtron CMOS 5 HR offers 14 megapixels, which is the highest resolution ever achieved. Yet, perhaps we have not conveyed the appeal of this device and sensor well enough. That is, the number of pixels does not only affect the resolution, it also contributes to tonal expression and is an important factor in enhancing the overall image quality. This is extremely important to Fujifilm, which has been focusing on color reproduction and tone control and producing a wide range of film simulations. Silver halide films, on which film simulation is based, are a completely continuous, seamless, non-step tonal design due to their analog nature. This is why photos taken with film are still considered natural and preferable today. In contrast, digital uses the depth of number of bits. In other words, the amount of colors to achieve natural tonal expression. In JPEG, RGB contains 8 bits, equals 256 steps each, a total of 16 million colors. While HIV has 10 bits, equals 1024 steps of RGB each, which is a total of 1 billion colors. For smoother tones, more pixels, that is, more number of pixels become effective. Color is the most important aspect of my photography, and I use it to create a sense of depth, but also a sense of emotion. And when we're using our cameras, we're thinking about the images that we capture. But for me, I'm also thinking about those colors and how those colors are going to be represented. When you think about Fujifilm, obviously the design of the cameras is amazing, but there's this long legacy of color. And thinking back to when I was younger and I was shooting with film, I used to select Provia, Astia, Velvia and understand what that color was going to represent before I even started shooting. And Fujifilm has put a lot of time into studying the art and science of color and how the film will transition into digital and become a film simulation. But to know that that legacy of that color and that tonality perfectly goes through from the film and all the way through the digital. What fascinates me about color and Fujifilm color specifically is the idea of memory color. Not just how we see something, but how we remember it. And in my photography, I, I try to use that. So I think of reds in a different way. I remember reds and greens in a different way. And being able to start by selecting a film simulation or even selecting one after and editing allows you to visualize not just the image but the colors of the image and start to have consistency between these shots and to be able to capture these images with the right emotion, or with the right color tones. It's been really fun to get to use the X-T1 and now the X-T5 and see all of those little nuanced design changes, but to know that the camera has stayed true to itself. And the color with the film simulations has stayed consistent, but the sensor technology has gone really far. And starting out with the X-T1 at 16 megapixels, it was a huge jump to the X-T2 at 24 megapixels. 
And now this evolution, once again, from the X-T4 to the X-T5 goes from 26 to 40. 40 megapixels is a really fun file size to work with because you never really feel like you're running out of details or you're never in a situation where if you want to crop, you feel like you're not going to have enough pixels. So I feel like it's a really suitable resolution of whether you're going to share these on your screen or even if you just want to show the photos on the smartphone, all the detail is there just waiting to be discovered. Well, you look at it from a very technical point of view. But what is important to me is that the files, they hold together. I tend to push and pull a lot on these files and um, I don't mind if there's some noise creeping in or something, but a file has to stick together. And what I noticed with other brands and the camera I used to use is that the files fall apart pretty easily. I've always liked the Fujifilm RAW files because they are so solid. Yeah, I always feel like we talk about megapixels and the overall size, but not the quality of the individual pixels. And that's the Fujifilm RAW files have that. When you zoom in, you start pulling shadows and highlights, and it does, it all holds together. Thank you, Takuya, Bert, and Ilaya. Now that we've talked about sensors, let's talk about processors. In fact, half of the appeal of a fifth generation X system lies in the X processor 5. The processor defines a lot from image quality, such as heat format compatibility, to hardware operation, such as image stabilization, pixel shift shooting, and battery management. Here's the simple example. The X-T5 uses the same battery as the X-T4, but the maximum number of shots per charge has been increased from 600 to 740, thanks to the power-saving design of the X Processor 5. Noticeable improvements are in the AF performance. The AF system has undergone countless innovations and updates since the X-T1 was introduced in 2014. Newly developed AF algorithm, as well as deep learning AI technology, are the unique features of the fifth generation X system. Now, XT series fans can also enjoy this feature. The 40 megapixel models of the XH2 and XT5 have a high precision AF system. In addition, the cameras are designed to handle high frequency subjects, both taking the advantage of high pixel counts. As resolution improves, expectations for AF accuracy becomes even more severe. For this reason, the X-T5 and X-H2 have a system that drives phase detection pixels, arranged at a density of 1.5 times more per unit area, compared to the 26 megapixel sensors. This ensures finer AF control and performance, especially when shooting subjects with more detail, that is, subjects with high frequency information. There was a time that I thought that a good AF system was only important for sports and action photographers. But as a portrait photographer, I find that the better the AF algorithms and systems get, the easier it is to do my job. And with the new AF system of the X-T5, um, it extends the possibilities by a great deal. So it allows me to not worry about focusing anymore. If the camera can take some of the work out of my hands, uh, that's a big advantage, even as a portrait photographer. And talking about subjects, I have a great uh, person that I can shoot today. She is actually the designer of my favorite lens, the XF33. So it's only fitting that I would photograph her with this lens. Are you ready? All right, so um, just look straight at me. Perfect. What's really great is that if I am close, the camera will pick the nearest eye. Because if you turn your face a little bit that way, then the camera will automatically pick the eye that is nearest to me. And usually that's what you want. You want the nearest uh, eye in focus. And if I, even if I move away 
a little bit. And now she's only like a, a very small part. The face is only a very small part of the frame. I can still rely on that autofocus th that even picks out the eye perfectly. And we have a little bit of margin, of course, when we're farther away, but it's good to know that the camera just picks out the eye perfectly. And if I'm really far away, the camera will still pick up the face and lock onto it and stay onto it. And in this case, the subject is pretty static, but if we have a moving subject with a continuous autofocus, the camera just tracks that uh, subject all the time and gives me peace of mind to keep shooting. That's such a beautiful look. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope you like these pictures. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The AF system takes so much work out of my hands, takes the guesswork out of my hands and allows me to focus on my subject, my composition and the light. So this technology, this new AF system definitely improves my work. Thank you, Bert. As you said, the X-T5 has achieved a quality that is a perfection of the X-T series. The final X-Summit for the 10th anniversary of X-Mount will not end here. Yes, we are pleased to introduce a new product from the XF lenses as well. This is XF 30mm f2.8 RLM WR Macro. In short, the XF 30mm f2.8 macro is a practical standard lens and a unique lens that only Fujifilm can produce. As you can see from the product name, it is a prime lens that has a standard angle of view, 35mm equivalent focal lens of 45mm. It is also capable of life-size macro photography. A macro lens with a standard angle of view does not necessarily mean it is very useful. But this specific lens has a tremendously wide shooting range. The minimum focus distance is only 10 centimeters from the sensor. It is truly versatile. Traditionally, macro lenses have relatively long focal lengths to shoot from mid-range distance. With the era of compact cameras, and now smartphones, more intuitive style of taking large close-up shots seems to have gained popularity. Robert Kappa said in the old days, if your picture aren't good enough, you aren't close enough. He might have meant it metaphorically. However, physically close distance shots do provide new perspective. When you find something you want to take, just lean closer. That is surely in the instinct of the photographers. I want to get closer, but the AF does not work. The focus indicator does not turn green. With XF 30mm f2.8, you will no longer have this problem. Like I said, the minimum focus distance of 10 centimeters is from the sensor surface. From the front lens, it is only about 1.2 centimeters. This is a lens that allows you to get as close as you want with nothing standing between the subject and the lens. Extreme close-ups are often accompanied by the problem of chromatic aberrations. Eliminating this problem was the key to realize high-quality close-up photography. The approach taken in the design was to use three high-performing aspherical lenses, with a particularly large aspherical lens in the last section, which tends to affect the close-up performance the most. Excellent descriptive power with superior resolution is required for a good macro lens. This ability to project a world beyond the naked eye is what makes people want to take all sorts of subjects. 
The second requirement for a practical lens is size. Portable size and style that allows you to approach all kinds of subjects were achieved by shortening the overall optical structure with inner focus system. The lens placed at the very front, which is one of the aspheric lenses introduced earlier, plays a major role in this. After all, an aspherical lens is equivalent to two to three spherical lenses. Last but not least, I would like to emphasize the speed of the lens. Among the challenges we faced to achieve the minimum focus distance, the most important factor may have been the AF speed. The closer you shoot, the harder it becomes to control the focus unit. This is because precision is required. At the same time, the focusing range widens from the nearest point to infinity. This means that a high precision focusing must be done in such a broad range. This process is not difficult if you can take time. But without speed, it will not be a usable lens. The solution was the linear motor drive. Linear motors are known for their high speed and movement accuracy. This is why we have used it in many of our XF lenses over the past 10 years, and it is the perfect match for this lens as well. But since the coil is wound around the entire parameter of the lens, the size becomes larger. Thus, we have only used them for lenses with large lens barrel. Creating the first linear motor driven prime lens, that was the last challenge. The solution to this problem is nothing less than a coordination between the optical and mechanical designers. The last aspherical lens I referred to earlier is located here in front of the AF unit. The optical design of the AF unit was made as small as possible, and the actuator was also designed just the right size. This is how the XF 30mm f2.8 macro was realized. Standard angle of view, 1 to 1 magnification macro, 10 cm minimum focus distance, compact and fast. Only X mount offers such a unique lens. This is a lens that will redefine the standard of compact macro lens. Now, let me introduce our guest top professional in macro photography and the global grant award winner of the GFX Challenge Grant Program 2021, Krittanen Tantraporn. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Hello, this is Krittanen Tantraporn, and I'm, I'm here in Japan to prepare for the GFX Grant 2021 photo exhibition first venue in Tokyo. So I have just checked all of my print work yesterday and it's all very incredible. The theme of my work is macro photography and I love all the bugs and insects and I want to capture all the detail, the formative beauty and that's why I require a GFX system because it has 100 megapixel resolution which can even further increase to 400 megapixels with the, with the pixel shift multi shot function. And in that is the way that you can get an insane result of the resolution and that is how I visualize the world of the insects. I feel something pretty similar from the FF 30mm macro lens that Yuji Sang just has introduced it. The limitation of GF lens is it cannot get too very close to the subject as much as FF 30mm lens can do. And with very close shooting distance advantage, XF millimeter lens is much more preferable when we want to do the focus stacking and also it gives a greater magnification which is the very essential thing when we deal with macro photography. We want to see the more impact of the insect closer. Thanks Dong. I'm so glad you enjoyed the XF 30mm f2.8. 
Can you give us a demonstration? Oh yes, of course. Okay. Mm. So here is a basic setting for shooting a macro photography. This is connecting to the the laptop with the pixel shift combiner program, which can use for this pixel shift thing to combine twenty photo into the one very high resolution photo. Actually, right now it's working. Wow, that's incredible. That's the Global Grant Award winner right here. I'm glad you like it. And this is, will be even more amazing if it shoot with GFX. Um, I hope many people will attend to the Tokyo exhibition starting on the 4th of November and also have the Osaka exhibition starting on the 16th of December. Thank you very much. Thank you, Krittanen. Now, let us announce the availability of the items we presented today. The X-T5 is $1699 and the XF 30mm f2.8 is $599. Both items are now being produced and shipped as quickly as possible. At the earliest, they will be available in two weeks on November the 17th, depending on where you are. We thank you for your patience. Well then, this is it for today's X Summit. We are very happy to have introduced so many items for the 10th anniversary of the X Mount and the 5th anniversary of the G Mount. The development of these products have been made possible thanks to the cooperation and feedback from many photographers, including the five speakers today. We thank you again for your support through the years. By the way, do you remember the 10th anniversary project, Reflections, that we started at the beginning of this year? This is the video project that features people we came to know during our 10-year journey, who picked up X cameras in their hands. We started this project in January and have consistently introduced one episode each month. Introducing people from all over the world who have wonderful stories to tell. Through the production of the videos, I was once again amazed by the fact that our products are loved so much by our customers, and in some cases, made an impact as to change their lives in a positive way. Although we could only share a limited number of stories in the Reflections project, we are grateful for the support from such individuals around the world over the past 10 years of X-Mount and five years of GFX. Thank you to all the X users out there. The last 10 years would not have been possible without each and every one of you. Please look forward to the journey for the next 10 years to come. See you at the next X Summit. Bye.